All right, we took care of that, Your right, Honor. Thank and, you. May we publish, or would you like to see it? I'd just like to see it first. Yeah. Okay. And what's, what's demonstrative is this going to be, then? This is plaintiff's 1305, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Could you play it? There you go. All right, so 13 marked as uh, played as 1305 and used as demonstrative. So you can publish to the jury. Mr. Newmeister, we're going to um, go ahead and play the demonstrative that you prepared, and then um, after the jurors have a chance to see it, if you want to explain to them um, what the demonstrative shows, that would be great. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Newmeister, what was uh, depicted in that video? The same photo treated uh, two different ways. One was marked with the original op or with the operating system from an iPhone, which is iOS 9.3.1 on that particular uh, photo. The one that says 9.3.1, there is a graphic below indicating it. The second photo uh, is marked Photos 3, and it looks quite a bit different. And um, just, Tom, could we pull up Defendant 708? Mr. Newmeister, does the image in Defendant 708 appear to be uh, similar, the same photo as uh, what was depicted in your demonstrative? It's the, it, it's the actually, it's the Photos 3.0 uh, edit version. Thank you. We can take that one down, Tom. Um, Mr. Newmeister, have you also formed an opinion about Defendant's Exhibits 712 and 713? Correct. Um, did you prepare a demonstrative that shows... Uh, I can show you if you'd like, Your Honor. All right, could we pull up um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 1306, Tom? And Your Honor, this is another video that, um, oh, can you pause that, please? This is another video that we prepared. It's, it's not published yet, so I'm happy to play it once through. Um, so that, play it once through. This is 1306. What exhibits are they? Sorry, Your Honor. What uh, exhibits are these that are in this video? It doesn't say. I don't okay. know. Yeah, I, I tried to get my question out a moment ago. Defendant 712 and 713, Your Honor. And if we could go ahead and play that, please. Um, Tom? And Mr. Neumeister, um, what's your, um, wh what do we see here in this demonstrative? Uh, there's uh, exhibit 712, I believe you have, I'm not sure the Bates number, 712 and 713. Uh, they're two separate exhibits, except it's the exact same photograph that's been, uh, one's been edited, one hasn't, or I can't say that one hasn't, but uh, the colors have been uh, modified in an editor. Objection, Your Honor, uh, beyond the scope of your ruling, talking about colors. It keeps happening. It, thank you, um, Mr. Newmeister. Um, did you form an opinion in this case about the authenticity of the photos that you reviewed, reviewed of Mr. 
Well, first of all, you can't, I can't, nobody can identify the authenticity of the photos, of any of the photos. Marked photos three, photos one, or just marked with the operating system number. And the reason is the manner of collection. So these came from an iTunes backup. Now, what is an iTunes backup? It's Objection, not, Your Honor. I'm sorry. You're on the scope of your ruling. Exit metadata. This keeps happening. Your Honor, may I approach on this one? So, Mr. Neumeister, um, without going into the specifics, what's your opinion about the authenticity of the photos you received from Ms. Hurd? Based on the way they were collected, there would be Objection, no... Your Honor. We just ruled on this. I framed my question, I thought, Your Honor, to avoid the issue that you're concerned about. Mr. Neumeister, what's your opinion about the authenticity here? There's no way for any forensic expert to validate any of these photos. Okay. Thank you very much. No further questions. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Neumeister. Good afternoon. Um, your only degree is in political science, correct? 42 years ago, correct. And you have no degree whatsoever from any academic institution in computer science, correct? That's correct. And you have no certifications in computer forensics, correct? That's correct. From the opinions you've testified today, you relied on no data except for the embedded EXIF metadata to support those opinions, correct? Incorrect. What other data did you rely on for the opinions you've testified to today? I was trying to explain that. Yep. You kept it what other data did you rely on for the actual opinions you've been able to testify to today besides EXIF metadata? The type of extraction that was performed? You're asking the question. For the actual that opinions you, del you testified to. That is what I would use. I would also use vector scopes. Objection, Your Honor. That's, that, that was not responsive to my question, Your Honor. If you want to approach. Sir, you can answer that question. Pardon? You can answer the question. Can you restate the question? Uh, I, I don't recall the question, Your Honor. Uh -huh. We can move on. Your Honor, maybe we could have the court reporter read it back. They could redirect. Uh, no. Okay. What, what was the question, Judy? I believe the question was, what methodology did I use to make my findings? Well, Judy's voice has changed. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is, is that correct, Judy? Okay. That's fine. Okay. So, when you're analyzing video or photo, in this objection case, to video, Your Honor, that's beyond the scope. All right, if you could just answer the question, sir. When you're analyzing a photo, a digital photo, you look at the EXIF data, you use a vector scope, you can use a Pantone chart if that's available, and that should be done, but that's a whole different deal. If I go into that, you'll object to it. So you'd also use a waveform scope, you would use an RGB parade, you can use a histogram, though in this case it's not really all that relevant. 
You are not offering any opinions that any photograph in this case was intentionally modified by Ms. Hurd, correct? I'm just stating the fact that photographs were modified. But so you are not offering any opinion that any photograph in this case was intentionally modified by Ms. Hurd, correct? That's correct. Can you please pull up Exhibit 170A? Is that Defendant's 170? Defendant's 170, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. So you offer testimony regarding this photograph during the direct examination, right, Mr. Neumeister? There's... That's a yes or no, sir. The photograph's like that. I don't exactly remember the photograph. There's so many different versions of this photograph, but yes, I talked about that particular photograph. But do you recall being deposed in this matter? Yes. You were under oath? Yes. And that was on April 6, 2022? I believe. May I approach Your Honor? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, Mr. Neumeister, if you could please turn to page 76. And when I say pages, those are the little pages in the four boxes, not the page at the top. And do you see page 76, line 3? You were asked on April 6, anywhere in your April 1, 2022 expert disclosure, do you offer any opinions regarding the authenticity or lack of authenticity of the specific photograph produced as ALH 7101? Response, can I refer to my report to see if that specific number is in the report? Yes. Response, not that specific photo. I just grabbed three out of the batch. Do you see that? Yes. Can you please pull up Exhibit 517, or Defendant's 517? Thank you. You are not offering any opinions regarding this specific photograph, right, Mr. Neumeister? That's correct. My testimony has been limited here. And you are not offering any opinion that any photograph was visually doctored by Amber, correct? Not by, I can't put the person who might have done it. Well, you're not offering an opinion that a photo was visually doctored by anybody, are you? I'd have to see each photo. There's no way to authenticate any of these photos based on what I received. So you testified about Photos 3. Do you recall that testimony? Correct. Photos 3 is a photo editing and photo sorting application, correct? It's a photo editor and photo sorter, as are a number of editors. So when you reference Photos 3.0, you never did any independent research. Strike that, Your Honor. So when the software of a photograph in the EXIF metadata says Photos 3.0, that could be just saying that the photo was saved in Photos 3.0, correct? Unless you looked at a scope of the photos that would tell you that the parameters of the photo do not meet that of the cell phone that it was taken on. But the notation Photos 3.0 in the software EXIF metadata, that does not in and of itself mean that the photo was edited in Photos 3.0, correct? It means that you've recompressed the photo and it will not hash or digitally fingerprint with the original photo. But it does not mean in and of itself that it was visually edited in any way in Photos 3.0, correct? Again, it's not the same photo because you're using lossy compression once you save it. So you have changed the photo. So if you could please turn to page 233 of that transcript. And line 20, do you see a question? When it says EXIF software, okay, Photos 3.0, on to 234. That's just saying it was saved in Photos 3.0, right? Response, saved in 3.0. That's correct. Question, that notation in and of itself does not mean that the photo was edited in 3.0, right? Answer, that's correct. Did I read that correctly? Yes. A file has not changed visually just because it has been processed through Photos 3.0, correct? That's incorrect. Can you look at page 128 of your deposition, please? At the bottom, line 20, question, do you see, question, but the file changed visually just because it has been processed through Photos 3.0. Answer, you know, obviously I understand what you're asking. From a technical point, yes, because of the compression. You get down to scopes and artifacts, yes, it has changed. Was it intentionally changed? We don't know. In other words, did somebody save it in there and just save the photo? We don't know. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. 
But again, it says so here. Just, that was my question, Mr. Neumeister. Okay. So if the EXIF metadata software field lists the software as iOS, you have no reason to dispute that, correct? Incorrect. Well, isn't data data? That's what you testified to, right? It's very simple to modify EXIF data. It's, I mean, Did you find any evidence phone. in this case of actual modification of EXIF metadata? You can't, you can't authenticate any of these photos because of the way they were. That wasn't my question, Mr. Neumeister. Did you find any evidence of any modification of EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case? You didn't listen to my answer. My answer is there is no way to know because of the way the files were presented. So you found, but you actually you found no actual evidence of it, correct? That no one could. I'm not asking if anyone else could, Mr. Newmeister. I'm asking, did you yourself find you you found no evidence of any modification of me EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case, correct? Now I understand trying to control the narrative, but there's no way to answer that scientifically because. Given the evidence we were given, there is no way to positively or negatively answer that. It's not a question that can be answered. It is, it is a question, Mr. Neumeister. The question is, did you yourself, you found no affirmative evidence of any modification of software EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case, correct? You, you found no actual evidence of that, did you? No one could tell either way because... I'm not asking about anyone else, Mr. Neumeister. I'm asking about you. Did you, you found no evidence of that, did you? Objection, Your Honor, asked and answered. He's not answered what he found, Your Honor. Overruled. There's not a way to answer that the way you're asking the question. You have to restate it. In a, you're trying to control Your Honor, he's not responding to the question. Right, could you just answer yes or no, sir, to the question? It's not a yes or no question. Did, Did you, yes or no, you found, you found no evidence of EXIF metadata modification of any photograph in this case, correct? That's incorrect. Okay. It is your opinion that the metadata of all photographs of purported injuries that Ms. Hurd has identified as her trial exhibits do not indicate that the photographs went through a photo editing application, correct? Well, uh, first of all, that's not a yes or no question because a lot of the exhibits that you have uh, um, put up, they're not photographs. They're screen grabs and they've been changed from a, a Apple format, which is JPEG, J JPEG, to a JPG Microsoft format. So you have actually changed the exemplars. You've changed the data yourselves. The, uh, we actually ran uh, EXIF data on some of your own examples that you've entered into evidence. They are not photos from an iPhone. Those were edited in on a PC. I'm gonna uh, hand up a page for your disclosure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So do you see on page eight of your disclosure, Mr. Neumeister, it states, quote, the, the metadata of all of the photographs of purported injuries that Ms. Hurd has identified as her trial exhibits do not indicate that the photographs went through a photo editing application. Did I read that correct? That's correct. No, further, we're talking no further questions. Yeah. All right, redirect. Mr. Neumeister, uh, yes. a moment ago, Mr. Murphy was asking you some questions about your opinion about the trial exhibits that Ms. Hurd has offered in this matter. Um, and he asked you about your opinion that they don't indicate that they've gone through a photo editing application. What can you tell us about that? Well, first of all, in this last exhibit, it says metadata, not EXIF data. So that's two different things altogether. We're talking EXIF data. And on the report, I put metadata because I was requested to cover meta and EXIF data. So it's taken out of context. The exit data is the data based that's embedded in the photo. Metadata can be the file data about the file itself, two different things. So the way the data was collected, it was an iTunes backup is a backup. Objection, Your Honor. Backups outside the scope of Your Honor's ruling Thank beyond you. exit metadata. I think you opened the door on the, the uh, rule objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead, Brian. 
An iTunes backup is only a backup of things that are on an iPhone that have not been deleted. It does not have the critical operating system. It doesn't have any of the files that would validate the path of a photograph in that phone. It does not have a lot of the log files. It does not have the Knowledge C database, which talks about usage of the phone and uh, the patterns of how data was handled. All it is is the photos you dis decided to save, not the photos you deleted. So it's a very limited database. Without the system registry or without the system operating system, there's no way to tell because it's very easy to modify a, a photo on a phone and have it just read iOS 9.3.1. But with the actual phone, if you were able to get a hold of the actual phone, and in 95% of all cases we work, we have the actual phones. It doesn't matter if the, the phones are 10 years old or 20 years old or not 20 years old, but 10 years old. The reason is if people have something they want to keep as evidence, it's, they don't throw out their phones, they don't recycle their phones, they save their phones. So people ask how we're doing phones on 13-year-old cases, because people do not throw out evidence, they keep the phone. So in a situation like this, there are no forensic extractions. In fact, the extractions we were provided were backups of backups of iTunes uh, just exports. So it's third generation and there is no way to verify the file paths and the history of any single photo that we've looked at. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, sir. You can have a seat in the courtroom. Or